spice man. That's right. We add it up, multiply it, man. Spice man. Oh, yes. A couple things we're gonna learn today. Spice man. All right. Take some time, educate yourself. Spice man. That's right. You won't believe it's just man. Come on. Hi, I'm Ruth Dutton. Hi, I'm Aaron Williams. Hi, I'm Brandon Alexander. Hi, I'm Kelvin Dutton. Hello, I'm Lyndon Sincere. We are your Spice Mad Tutors. You won't believe it's just me. Hello again, welcome back to Spice Math. And in today's lesson, we would like to approach um, how do you do subtraction in different bases. As you would have noticed in prior lessons, we have focused on base 8 um, until you get the principles for addition and subtraction. And we're going to do the same thing today. But we're also going to look at a few examples in base 5 as well. The principle is the same the bases or the groups are usually different, but the principle is the same. In today's lesson, we will look at how you do, we will review how you do subtraction in base 10 using the concept of regrouping, or as some people might say, borrowing. And we're going to see how we can apply this same principle in base 8 or base 5, as the case may be. So first, let's go to the board, and I'd like you to zero in on the first example. It's in base 10. 2,137 subtract 386. Now, if you're subtracting, notice we are still observing the position of the numbers, of the digits, and we have an understanding that each position represents a different power of 10. So 7 take away 6 in the units column, 7 take away 6, that's okay. We can subtract 6 from 7, we're going to get 1. Now we move to the tens column. We have 3, subtract 8. Now under normal conditions, we cannot subtract 8 from 3. So that's where we use regrouping. We now move to the hundreds column and we have one group of hundreds or 10 to the power of 2. We're going to regroup that and it's going to become 10 groups of 10 in the tens column. So the one group of hundreds can be regrouped to form 10 group of tens in the tens column. Now this 10 group of 10s will be added to the 3 groups of 10s that's there already, giving us 13 groups of 10s. And we can now subtract 8 groups of 10s from 13 groups of 10s. Now normally, what you may have learned is that you can just put the 1 by the 3. But what I showed you just now is what actually happens for us to get the 1 by the 3. We had to regroup one of the hundreds into 10 groups of tens, and that 10 groups of tens were added to the three groups of tens before the subtraction could take place. Now we can subtract 13 groups of tens, take away eight groups of tens, gives me five groups of tens. Now remember, we regrouped this group of hundreds here, so we can put a cross on it. So there would actually be no hundreds because that, that group was regrouped to be used in the tens column. So we now have to regroup one group of the thousands. We have two groups of thousands. We, we will regroup one group of the thousands. It's going to become ten hundreds because every thousand, ten to the power of three, is really ten times a hundred or ten times ten to the power of two. So now, the group of thousands we regrouped into hundreds, we have ten hundreds, we can now subtract. Ten, subtract three, seven. And one, in the thousands column, take away zero, is 
1. So, what you just saw was subtraction in base 10. Keeping in mind that when we were regrouping, because we were in, we were in base 10, we have to keep that we're dealing with powers of 10. So every time we regrouped, what we got in the previous column would have been 10 because we're dealing with base 10. Now let's see what happens when we're working in base 8. So let's look at what happens when you have subtraction in base 8. 7431 base 8, subtract 5640 base 8. Now, 1 take away 0 in the first column is 1. That's always easy. Once you're taking away a smaller number from a bigger number, you can go straight ahead and subtract. The next column, remember we were in base 8, so the first column would have been 8 to the 0 or units. The second column would have been 8 to the 1, as we did in the previous lesson. The third column would have been 8 to the 2, and the fourth column would have been 8 to the power of 3, because we're working in base 8. So 1 take away 0 is 1. Now we have 3 take away 4. Now because the 4 is greater than the 3, we'd have to do the regrouping as we did in base 10. So we go to the next column, which is 8 to the power of 2. That would be 64's column. And we will regroup one of the groups. So we're going to be left with 3. And the one group of 64's that we are going to regroup is now going to become 8 groups of 8's. Because we did it in base 8. 8 times 8 gives 64. So if we regroup one group of 64's, we're going to get 8 groups of 8. Or 8 multiplied by 8. So that's correct. The eight groups of eights that we regrouped would now be added to the three groups of eight. So we have 11 groups of eight. Eight plus three gives 11. Now we can subtract four from 11 gives us seven. We move now to the third column, the 64's column. Three subtract six. Again, this presents a case for regrouping because we cannot subtract 6 from 3. So we need to go to the other column, 8 to the power of 3. Use one of the 8 to the powers of 3 and regroup it into the previous column. We're going to get 8 of those groups. This 8 is added to this 3. We're going to get 11. And now we can say... 11 subtract 6 gives me 5. Then we move to the next column, 8 to the power of 3. 6 take away 5. That one is simple, no regrouping here. It's 1. Let's double check because we now thinking in groups of 8. It's not groups of 10. As we are accustomed to, we're now thinking in groups of 8. So every time we regroup and we go back to the previous column, it's going to become 8 of those groups because we're working in base 8. 7431 base 8, subtract 5640 base 8 gives us a result of 1571 base 8. And that's our answer right there. Now let's see if we can try another one in base 8, just to ensure that you grasp the principle of regrouping in a different base. Very well. So now we can continue, and we want to look at this example. We would like to take this slowly so you could understand the principle of working in base 8. Let's look at example number 2. 
1041 base 8, subtract 325 base 8. Let's subtract. 1 take away 5 does not happen in this type of subtraction. So we need to regroup. We're thinking in groups of 8. We're going to regroup one of the second group. So we're going to be left with 3. And that one group would become an 8 in the previous group. Okay? 8 plus 1 gives 9. 9 take away 5 gives us 4. Now we can move on. 3 take away 2 gives us 1. That was straightforward. There was no need for regrouping there. Then we have 0 take away 3. We would do, have to do some regrouping. We move to the next column. There is one group here. So we regroup it and it's going to become 8 in the previous column because we're working in base 8. Each column is actually 8 times the column to the left. Okay? Now we can say 8 take away 3 gives me 5. So now we have 1041 base 8, subtract 325 base 8, results in 514 base 8. And we'd like to remind you that when you're working in a base other than 10, we cannot use words like 100 and 2040 and so on, because those words are words assigned to numbers in base 10. And that's the reason why when you call out numbers in a different base, we don't say 1041, it's 1041 base 8. So that's the protocol. Okay, now we're going to give you some for you to practice with.
Very well. Now you should have completed the subtraction. Let's check what you really did. 3 take away 5. We're in base 8. Okay. So that means we need to regroup because we cannot subtract 5 from 3. So we're going to regroup from the next column. We're going to take one of the groups there from the 7. And we're going to regroup it. It's going to become 8 in the previous column. So we now have 8 plus 3 is 11. We add on these two numbers. 11 take away 5 will give me 6. Then we move to the next column. 6 take away 4. That's 2. No regrouping here. 2 take away 4. We need to regroup for that because the 4 is bigger. So we're going to come to the next column. Regroup one of those here. It's going to become 8 in the previous column. So 8 plus 2 would give us 10. 10 take away 4 would give us 6. And 4 take away 3 would give us 1. Answer. Next one, we now move to the one with base 5. Okay, we have to be thinking in groups of 5 now. So every time we regroup in this subtraction, we would have to be thinking about groups of 5. 3 take away 2, that's 1, so no regrouping here. 0 take away 3, we need to regroup. So we're going to regroup one of those from here. We're going to be left with one. And the group that we're going to shift to the next column is going to become five because we're working in base five. Now we can subtract. Five take away three is two. Let's move on to the next column. One take away four. Mm, we need to regroup here. So we regroup using the other column as zero. The group, when it goes back, a column would become 5 because we're thinking in base 5 or groups of 5. So now we have 5 plus 1, 6, take away 4, that gives me 2. Answer. So what did we do today? We looked at subtraction in a different base. But we use the same principle we've been using in base 10. So once we get the principle right, you should get everything correct after that. I'm wishing you all the best as you practice with those we're going to put up on the board next. Take some time, educate yourself, spice math. You won't believe it's just math. Come on! It's just mad. You won't believe it's just mad. Just mad. Spice mad. That's right. You add it up, multiply it, man. Spice mad. Okay. A couple things we're gonna learn today. Spice mad. Alright. Take some time, educate yourself. Spice mad. That's right. You won't believe it's just mad. Come on. It's just